All right, guys, we're going to do this beautiful sunset sail. Let's get started. Oh, well, I guess I pushed that button a little quick. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with a beautiful sunset sail. And to get started, before we even get started, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for your support during this time of daily lives, Monday through Friday. I am having a blast. I hope you are too. I've been really enjoying seeing the paintings last night posted the cherries. I saw Mary's cherries. Oh, so pretty. And Debbie's cherries too. You guys got to just check out those videos and do some of these paintings. You might get called out also. Thank you. And remember that subscribing to this channel is always free. It helps me out. It helps you out. You get to know when new videos are going up. Make sure that you have clicked that notification bell. Woo! Got to get all those words out. We are doing a fun painting. This is with the Turner Acrylic Gouache. It's an acrylic, which means that each layer will dry completely. It will not blend up through to the next layer. And you can layer light colors over dark colors, which gives us a lot of flexibility. And hey guys, I want to say hello to everybody coming in. Thank you so much. I know I have some sunset lovers in my in my community, and I'm so glad that you guys are here in the community too. I will probably be turning off the face camera when we go to the closer up view. I did not do any painting on the 140 pound watercolor paper that we're painting on. This is taped down to a piece of coral plast. It's a corrugated plastic cardboard, basically. It just is plastic, so it's waterproof, which makes it really nice. And I'm not worried about um, having it warp or anything like that. If you tape down to cardboard or mat board, if you work a little bit too wet, it is going to get warpy and it won't hold your paper as solid. I'm using a variety of brushes. I have some, I have a brush that's a flat brush here from Turner. It is about a 3 8 inch. I do have a rigger brush from Mimic. This is a ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> this is a rigger from Mimic by Creative Mark. And this is the number 12 round by, that's the Mimic by Creative Mark. These are synthetic watercolor brushes. You don't want to use real hair brushes with acrylic because they're generally not stiff enough and you don't want to do your best, you know, $30 brushes with gouache or acrylic just because it can, it can be a little bit more rough on your brushes. I love silhouettes and I am so excited to share this one with you. Now I need to put my paint out. I did not do that ahead of time. I just grabbed a handful of sunset type colors. So I have permanent red, permanent orange, permanent lemon, permanent yellow deep. I do have Prussian blue, white, and black. So who knows? We may use the black. We may not. I might make my um, silhouettes with a chromatic black. I just have a piece of palette paper right here. This is, I used it for the painting yesterday. I just turned it around. You can, it is dry. It's not going to affect the paint if I end up mixing over the top of it. It's, it might look a little messy, but it's, you know, we're trying to conserve. So let me get these paints out. And wow, thank you guys so much for sharing. I really appreciate you going out and sharing these videos with your friends, sharing the links for my channel and the videos. And what I'd really, really like to have is if you guys could please click the like button and leave me a comment when you have a chance. Uh, YouTube is really looking at comments and interaction for how they're sharing these videos out. Thank you for my cup of tea. Thank you. I have, yes, I have a tea boy. <laughs> Mark laughed. Actually, he grinned at me. 
So that was the lemon. This is the permanent yellow deep. Yeah. After after all these years, I guess I can call him a boy still. This is the Prussian blue. Prussian blue is so dark, I could use it almost as black by itself. Then I have the black, and I think I'm going to not put the black out. I'm going to leave that to the side, and I am going to put some white out. Probably a plop of white down here, because I'm going to be mixing it with yellow to start off with. Hey there! Yeah, the chromatic black, I think, might be really nice. Uh, it's because we can make black from these colors. Black is just a combination of red, yellow, and blue. You mix your red and yellow, you get an orange. You add your blue to it, and you get a really dark color. The more blue or red or yellow you add to something, you can shift the depth of the color. So that's how you make a chromatic black. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to the close-up view now. We can pretty much see the see the whole palette. I am going to be taking that lemon yellow and white, and I want to get a nice, nice mixture of that. This is going to be put over the whole thing, and I probably should have grabbed my bigger brush. Let me get the paint out of this, and I'm going to grab a bigger brush. Because I want to get that across the whole thing more quickly. Let's just grab a big brush. I have a big one inch Simply Simmons wash. We are going to do a little trick. Once we've got this brightest yellow on, we will be drying the center of the painting. I'm not going to dry the whole thing, but I want to dry the center because I am going to mask where the sun is going. Let's see. And as we get more color on here, this is going to become much more apparent that it's a sunset. Right now that, that yellow is very, very pale. It's a very thin layer also. So wipe out the brush. I did not clean it really well yet. See, there's still some yellow in there, but I'm, it's still wet, so I'm not too worried. I want to take my heat tool. There we go. I want to take my heat tool, and I'm just going to zap right here in the very center. Just dry that off. I have cut a piece of artist tape. That's all we need. I've cut a piece of artist tape. I've had it sitting on my sleeve. So you can, see, I don't know if you can see there. It's got some lint on it so that it won't stick down permanently hard. And looking at that reference, the sun is fairly dead center, but you know, I want to make sure I'm on that drier area. It's still kind of damp underneath. So I'm hoping that the sun will the sun will just stay. I am going to grab my cup of tea, take a slurp. So there's my cup of tea. Okay. Yep. I really did slurp that. Sorry. It's very hot. Mark just brought it to me. So now we have the sun pressed down. When we do our whole sunset on the sky, then we'll peel that off while the sky is still wet. We'll peel it off, then we can blur out the edges right around it, but the sun is going to be our brightest color. I could go ahead, ooh, I could go ahead and get some of that yellow just worked down here also into the, into the water. There we go. We'll go ahead and just get that. So I am going to be working my sun rays, my, my light of my sun, around the circle. And this is really 
concerning me that it is so, so bright. So I think we are going to get that darkened up just a smidge. Let's see. Darken that up just a little bit or bring down the contrast. Just a little bit. Not too much. There we go. Just darken that up just a smidge so that we can see it a little bit better. Hello! When I use the gouache, do I do light to dark like you do with watercolor? Actually, it's just like doing acrylic. You can, because this gouache is acrylic gouache, you can do light to dark and dark to light. With regular, with regular gouache, you can do the same thing, but you have to be a little more careful that the layers are dry between layering up. But regular gouache, you can layer light on top of dark also. I just happen to want my sun to be really, really bright. So I just put it down, put a piece of tape over it to make the sun and we're going to go from there. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my middle yellow here. This looks, it's yellow deep is what it, what they say it is. And I'm going to take that with some of the regular yellow and just a touch of white. I'm going to be loosely mixed on my brush. So see, it's loosely mixed on the brush and we're going to start going around the sun and we're going to work our way out from that. So I'm going to pick up some of the deeper orange. I have to remember that I'm doing this on a much smaller piece and I decided to use a big brush. And now I'm going to just take some of that orange color right down onto the water. Let it be streaky. Just work going across. And while the paint is wet, you can blend. I'm going to take some of that red into the orange. This is actually a really fast, fast way to get a lovely sunset in. The colors are so bright. You know, I would just say play with your colors. If you play with the colors you have, you are the one that's the boss of your painting and you can choose how deep or bright your colors are in your sunset. So now I'm gonna go back and grab some of that lighter yellow orange type of mixture and go back and bring that right up over the sun again just to give it some variation and to smooth out there we go kind of smooth out our now I'm just lightly ever so lightly just touching it and going across. I want to darken up those outside edges a bit more. So I'm taking more of the permanent red with the orange. And I'm just going to put just a, ooh, not that much, not that much, not that much. I, I want just a tiny touch of Prussian blue in there to kind of start darkening up the outside edges of our sky. There we go. And then we're going to, boy, the colors are looking really, really pale on the, oh, I see. I'm looking up at, this, up at my computer and I'm seeing the, the delay. <laughs> I'm going, why is that color not coming through? Oh, <laughs> so now I just have a wet brush and I am going to soften those, those little bits that I put on the outside and down here into the water. It is pretty colors. 
Very, very pretty colors. Now, something I have noticed is that these paintings, when I do the actual uh, background without leaving a layer of dry paint underneath, the paper does tend to warp a little bit more aggressively. So now I'm going to go in here. The, the water is darker. So we're going to just start adding a little bit more of that Prussian blue. Whoa, that was a lot. I may end up getting some fresh paint. Or not. Ooh, oh, actually, this is the... This will be perfect for my horizon line. Now I'm just going to go straight across, pick up where the sun is going to be. There's going to be that kind of keyhole space. There's like a little bit of a land mass at the back here. The sun is going to be shining right here. So let's just leave that hole available. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> ah, for anybody who is coming in a little bit later, this is the reference picture that I'm using. It is on the traceable. So you have a reference right there with your painting. We have painted in the background with the light yellow, then put a piece of tape cut into a circle right here, and that's protecting that brightest color in the background. And then we worked in circular motion, putting on the oranges and reds and yellows. Now we've put in the horizon. And you can always go back and watch the whole video. If you are new here, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And I am looking forward to having you as part of our artist community of creative individuals. <laughs> so thank you so much when you hit that subscribe button. And make sure and turn on your notifications. All right, so that's kind of settled in a little bit. I want to get a touch of some of that darker color down here in the water. Now there's a darker space right here. I have not, that the water is kind of bumped up a little bit behind the boat. So the boat is going to be going right about here and we'll pull out the dryer, the heat tool, we'll dry this and then we'll use the Sorol transfer paper to sketch on or transfer on the boat. All right, so now what we need is a little bit more of that shadowy bit. I do want to actually pick up some of that darker orange. That's the Prussian blue mixed with the orange and some of the permanent red. And we're going to give it just a few little, few little wave bits. You don't want to put this darkest color in the path straight down from the sun. And the path for the sun is going to be the width of the sun. So the path of light, if you look right here, how wide that sun is, that's how wide the path of light is. It really doesn't get wider and narrower. So we've got a really nice way to get that in there. All right. So now I'm going to go across. We're taking some of that darker color. We're just putting in some of these little wavelets. A few little spots here and there. Some of it will get uh, softened. And the way I'm going to soften it is just taking my big brush again and just tapping where that wet paint is. Since this is all wet right now, if you tap on it, you can move it around, soften it out, make the effect not look quite like um, lumps of dirt, but more like shadows in the water. 
and that spot right there is actually really dark. And kind of bumped up. It's right behind where the boat's going. But this skyline back here is really soft. All right. Ooh, splish splash. Splashing my water around. Now I want to go ahead and start putting in that brighter white area, the bright light, bright light. Ooh, I do have some white here and yellow. So I cleaned out my brush. I'm picking up some white and yellow and the width of the sun is about the width of my, my brush. Ooh, that's good. So this is right there on the horizon. Want to make sure that I'm staying lined up with the, with the sun and I'm just touching and kind of coming down and doing little sideways strokes. Use your brush to your advantage. Now it starts getting a little bit more yellowy on the outside. Whoa, don't want any dark in that. So I have to rinse my brush out. Accidentally bumped the dark color. So let's pick up some white and yellow and a little touch of that permanent yellow deep. Let's see. Yeah. So now come back up here and we're just getting some of that yellow on the outside edges. We're going to separate it just a little bit, let more of the water in the background come through, flip my brush over, just let that come forward. See how that worked? Pretty darn, pretty darn well. Maybe pick up just a little bit there, but we're keeping it fairly straight. Now, what we're going to do is pull the tape off. I need my little craft knife just to lift it. Just have to see where I threw my craft knife. There it is. I'm just going to use the craft knife just to get under that tape. Look at that. So now we've got that pretty, pretty, pretty sun. I'm just taking a little bit of the white and orange yellow that was on the, on the palette. Maybe need a little bit more white. But see, by doing that, we didn't have to stress so much about the, about keeping our sun perfectly, perfectly round. It's not perfectly round anyway. It's kind of optically squished. Now, I think I want to make a soft glow right around the sun. So I'm taking some of the white and that permanent orange, lots of white, and just a little bit of that permanent yellow. And we're just going to put like a little halo around the sun. Start glowing it up just a little bit. And then we'll take our just wet brush with maybe a little bit of paint left in it, but not, there we go. So we can kind of blend that out. Give us that little optical. Optical glow. All right. 
If you added pink, it would be Florida. Ah, yeah, this is very much a, a West Coast type of um, a West Coast type of sunset, I think. I am going to dry this now. I, I'm really quite happy, I think, with the edge. Maybe I'll soften it just a smidge in and out. Right up here at the back edge. Just like that. And make sure that we're nice and bright right back here. And truthfully, I want to brighten up my sun just a little bit more right in the very center of that. Cool thing is, you can go in and do that. Gouache is so neat. I love the the effect that the gouache has, that velvety, smooth. So I'm looking right here though at that that area right right at the back. I want this to be a tighter line. And I'm going to see if I can do that. Part of the reason why it doesn't look as tight of a line is that the paper is warping some. That's what I was saying before, is that when you when you work on the straight paper without it being sealed with paint or, or gouache or gesso, is that it can warp a lot more on you. I'm finding that I'm finding that to happen. I'm, even though it's not in the picture or in the reference, I was just dropping a little bit more of some light reflection down here so that it's dancing off those. And that's just with the, the dirty brush. I'm not, not too worried. Yeah, that's, that's looking good. That's looking good. You could scumble the glow around the sun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. I am, um, make sure that you wipe the water off the ferrule of the brush. Let's see. We could even have a little bit of some little tiny bit of some cloud coming across. It's not too much. We're not, we're not going for a, a cloudy sky. But there might be just that little tiny bit of a haze. Just that. Just tiny little touches. You're, you're good to go on that. All right. I am really, really happy with seeing everybody's paintings. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee, or my tea, sorry. All right. We're going to put the boat in. So now I want to make sure that's really dry. Let me just dry that off real quick. I'm using a heat tool. You don't really want to use a heat tool. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're this, you're enjoying the the sunset. You know, sometimes we need to paint things that take us to other places since we can't go to other places. Uh, if you were to varnish gouache, the the reason why you would varnish a painting like like acrylic or whatever is just to protect it from you know, if somebody is going and doing crazy things, like uh, Cinnamon said, rubbing peanut butter on it or something. Um, really, it's acrylic paint, this gouache painting is. So it's just like, just like a regular acrylic painting. You could varnish it the same way. You would want to use a matte varnish. It's not going to do um, as much to making the colors pop because matte doesn't pop the colors and these colors are pretty juicy already and let's see 
A acrylic wash does not re-wet. So acrylic wash does not re-wet the way regular wash does. I am grabbing the uh, Sorol transfer paper. I'm going to use the blue so that way you guys are going to be able to see it. And since we're going in with a dark You know, we're going to put a silhouette on. So right now, though, I need to look at this and figure out where did I put my little. There's my little dark run. Pull down just a smidge. You can be much more scientific with this. Let's see. Did I? I think I just lost the paintbrush. I don't know where it went. Oh, well, hopefully that paintbrush isn't the one I need. <laughs> All right, so you could be much more scientific with your placement. And if I was working on a big surface, I would tape everything down. But I'm, I'm pretty happy. I think I'll lift you up just a little bit. I think I slid down, yeah. All right, so now I am just going to use a hard pencil we do not actually have sails. The sails are all bound up down here. They're all wound up for the night. So there we go. And I like silhouettes because you don't have to be as precise with them. You know, you, you just want to be relatively precise, sort of there. I do want to make sure that I get a few marks coming down and off for the, uh, for the mast. And the rest of it, I don't really need to put anything else in there. Uh-oh, I put it right over the top of the sun. But you know what? That's okay. That's actually kind of cool. Or I could move it over. It's, it is cool. I think I'm going to leave it. What do you guys say? What do you say? Should I leave it right there dead center? Or should I go ahead and uh, lift that off and move it over? I thought I was right here <laughs> with the back edge of my boat. And, you know, sometimes serendipity works that way for you, though. And this is just the boat a couple seconds later. So, yes, there are different types of gouache. There's a, uh, like the Arteza um, pr premium gouache colors. These are re-wettable. They um, blend down through all the layers <laughs> and uh, but you can layer light colors on top of dark colors but just like watercolor you can re-wet it you could come back and work on that painting down the road and just take a wet paintbrush to it so gouache paintings you want to put under glass you don't want to varnish them regular that's the regular gouache the acrylic gouache this gouache is um, just, it's made with an acrylic polymer emulsion, which is just like acrylic paint, but it has a property in it that makes it matte and very velvety. Leave it. Okay, I'm leaving it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> we are going to just have some fun. We are going to mix up that uh, chromatic, chromatic black. So I'm taking my Prussian blue, and this Prussian blue does not have any black in it. This Prussian blue, or excuse me, this Prussian blue does have black in it. It is um, a combination of ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and black. So it's PB29, PB15, and PBK7. So Prussian blue, permanent red, 
touch of that yellow deep and then a little bit more of the Prussian blue what we've actually made is a super super deep dark purpley color and here we go now I am going to rotate my my painting to make it easier to put in the lines going sideways so I want my boat I'm going to grow my boat just a little bit so that it lands in the right spot on the water. I'm using the 3 8 inch flat brush. I'm not sure what Turner calls it because it's all in Japanese. So if you read Japanese, there it is. If somebody reads Japanese, could you tell me what the brush says? <laughs> but look how dark that is. That really looks black. So there is going to be a bit of a shadow going into our little light path right here. Come to there. I'm just using the flat edge to do all of the, the big areas here. The people, I think, have gone down below for right now. Actually, there were some people in this painting. There was a guy standing. I figured, you know what? Let's just not do the person standing there. So this is where the sails are all pulled down and inside on the boom. I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> I really don't have a lot of sailing knowledge. My sailing knowledge comes from watching YouTubers who are sailing. <laughs> kind of like the van life people or the RV people. You've got people who live on their boats full time. And so... I've seen crossings in, in the deep, deep oceans and, and things like that, you know, where they take overnight crossings and many days, two people on a boat. <sighs> that, that would just scare me. <laughs> All right. So now I am going to, this is, this is the one that is actually the most, uh, this line is probably the most scary. Just take it slow. Just breathe. And just go straight down. And try to keep it in one pass. If you keep it in one pass, you know, you might come down and make it just a little bit wider at the base. But if it's a little too thick at the top, don't worry about it. I'm going to take the rigger brush to do the, um, to do the rigging lines, but I think I can just set my brush in like this and use the edge of the brush to make those railings just like that. Ooh, that worked really well. And then going across the top of the railing. This is so nice because you're getting that glow through the railings. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty darn pleased with that. Now looking at the, the reference, I know that this was before it got into the into the sunset uh, path here, the sun path, but we do have the shadow even over here of the rigging. Oh, there's there's also a little a little cross piece. I'm going to bring it down just a smidge so that it's below the the sun. So there's this fine little cross piece right there. You can hardly see it. And I'm not putting the railings on the front edge. 
Line up the ruler, paint along the edge to get your line straight. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we could do that for these uh, rigging lines, or I could just play it by ear and <laughs> wing it. <laughs> I you The main thing with the getting the really fine lines is that you want to make sure that your brush comes to a point, very fine point, and that you fill your brush up with enough paint and you wipe all the water drops off the ferrule so that they can't run down and become a big splotch. All right, thank you so much for being here, Gina. I appreciate you being here. Okay, so now I am going to set my hand down. I'm resting my hand right on the canvas on an angle here. And I'm going to use my fingers since I'm, I, I've got enough range of motion, it looks like. And I can come back on the brush just a little bit. Balance, balance on, my, on my pinky. There it is. Balance on my pinky. And then just... Stay up on the tip and just pull down. Now these brushes were actually made for doing things like this. They were made for doing super fine lines, rigging. And if it goes a little bit crooked, I'm not too worried about it. Maybe that line is a little slack. And this didn't this boat didn't have any flags flying on it. So we're not going to worry about doing any flags. I am going to actually rinse that rigger brush out. Always rinse the rigger brush out as soon as you can. Otherwise you will end up with a rigger stick. <laughs> Now, right down here, I kind of overshot just a little bit. I'm going to see if I can clean that up. No, not going to clean up very well. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and make some, uh, some more of that orange. There we go. We've got that orangey red color. And we'll just... Give it a little bit of that shadowy bit. Just trying to to keep it keep it lighter, keep it brighter. Not not going as dark as it could be going. There we go. And then, because we're in front of the sun, that, that path now is going to be darkened up a little bit also. I'm going to take my <laughs> Oh, don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. Make sure that you're breathing really deep all the way into the bottom of your lungs, guys taking deep breaths. Don't hold your breath. Actually pulling a line going across. If you blow out while you're pulling the line instead of instead of pulling your breath in, you actually relax your relax your um, diaphragm, relax your belly. And it it relaxes the tension in your shoulders. Just look at that a little tiny bit. Didn't need a lot. We're just darkening that that right where the boat is just a little bit, but it's not dark, dark. Okay, now. Thank you so much. All my friends in far away places. Thank you. I'm taking a damp brush right along where those blue lines are. We're going to clean that up. 
it's not going to, to take my paint off because my paint is acrylic. Now, if I rubbed across it really hard, I could make my, my paint come off. And something that I've noticed is when you're cleaning these, this Sorol off, if you clean towards your paint line, you're sort of like pushing it toward the paint line, you're not going to end up with it interfering with your paint. How's that for a, for a description, hey? So push toward the paint line. So this one I can push towards the paint line. Just clean it off, slightly damp brush. Now, I do have some paint, or some of that chalk line right here. So I'm pushing it towards the paint line. Oops. The blue can be a little problematic. It can darken up your lighter colors. So be careful. And if it really becomes problematic for you, you can always carefully paint in around. So since this is sitting right in front of the light, we could actually go in with just the hint of a highlight touching in a couple spots, like on the on the edge of edge of the top of the boat. This is not in the reference. This is just me playing now, but just giving it a tiny little hint. And maybe even a little hint of light just coming around the edge of that mast. And maybe right here, hitting the top of that. Ooh, I am happy with this. What do you guys think? Are you enjoying? Are you happy? Are you ready to, we can sign it. Ready to sign? I'm ready to sign. I'm taking my rigger and some of the yellow and the red with, and then putting it into the white, I think. Getting kind of a peachy, reddy, yellow, orangey color. <laughs> Not too wet. If you get too much water, you can lay the, the brush down and allow the water to come out of the belly into the paper towel. I'm going to, I think I'm going to sign it right over, nope, not with that color. We're going to go with a smaller brush and a little bit darker color. That got too, too light. Let's see if I can do that with this brush. Paint's too thick. <laughs> there we go. Getting down towards the end of the painting, sometimes the paint gets a little bit thick. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to pull the tape off and see what we ended up with, eh? If the tape stays stuck onto your paper, you can always hit it with a heat tool. Oh, let's go ahead and zoom out. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're going to zoom out and pull the tape off. I am reusing my tape, so this tape is uh, new for this painting, but it will get used for the next one. The next painting is going to be so much fun. 
I am doing a little bit of magic and I'll show you my, my, uh, traceable. But look at that. Doesn't that look like a postcard? Looks like a postcard. Wish you were here. I wish I was there. <laughs> Thank you guys. And here is oops, a couple things. One, super simple, traceable for tomorrow. We're going to have a blurred out flower with a water drop sitting on a piece of grass that's reflecting that whole flower right there. So that's going to be our project tomorrow. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you are looking for fun things to do, I have my Fun Floral Mandalas coloring book available on Amazon. So you can check that out. The, let's see, do I have that as a link? Aha, possibly. There we go. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, share, and click that notification bell. <laughs> Remember also to go out and do something creative or stay in and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.